guys, Ariel at Fine F. Tonight we are making a kind of beef veggie soup. Now I've gone ahead and got started here with a couple of things, chopping up onions and garlic. First thing I'm going to do is saute those. I'm going to use coconut oil. You could use any kind of fat, butter, um, baking grease, you know, whatever you've got and like. Just be aware that with real fats you want to get one that um, is intended for a high heat that has a, a higher smoke point. Um, if you use something like olive oil, which is a great oil for salad dressings and that kind of thing, it, it gets a little bit oxidized at a lower temperature than things like coconut oil. So olive oil is not a good oil for heating. It's great for other things. So I've got some coconut oil put in my pot here. Get that melting. I've already got my garlic chopped up. I've probably got hmm, almost two cups of garlic there. As you probably know, I really like garlic and I uh, very much enjoy putting a whole ton of it into most things I cook. So for almost any soup I make, and soup covers a broad category, to me soup is anything that is a bunch of different things mixed together in a pot with some kind of liquid. But for any kind of soup I make, I usually start out with some kind of fat to saute my onions and garlic in, then onions and garlic, and broth. Now I use uh, homemade bone broth, which I make usually from turkey or whatever other bones. I always save whatever bones I get from anything that has bones, especially all the good cartilage and joints and that kind of thing. And so that's just kind of my base for just about any kind of soup. So like normal, I'm starting out that way. I've got my fat in here. I'm going to put my onions and garlic in here. I've got it on kind of a low heat because you don't want to burn these guys and kill all their great immune boosting properties and their flavor and all of that. So we're just going to do onions and garlic in there. that a little rinse, like bamboo spatulas. You can see at one point in history I burnt the edge of that one. It's been that way for many years. So I'm going to let those start to just saute up in there. And while they're doing that on a nice low heat, I'm going to use this chunk of elk that I pulled out of the freezer again last night to thaw. You just cut this into kind of bite-sized chunks. I use elk because it's the meat I have. It is a, it's a good meat, it's a healthy meat, um, but I realize that most people in the country don't have access to elk, and it does, especially when handled correctly, taste very, very much like beef. The flavor is slightly different, but it's not gamey. I've had gamey game meat, and I don't enjoy that taste at all. Um, it's just not pleasant but the elk that I use does not have any gamey flavor. But any recipe that you see me using elk in, beef would absolutely work for almost anything, you know, lamb, ground turkey, whatever you'd like would work. But this is kind of a, a red meat um, combo here. So some kind of red meat that you like. Or the soup would probably be good with no meat. Most of the people I end up cooking for really like meat, so it ends up in almost all of my soups. Now as you see how floppy the meat is here, if I had been a little more thoroughly organized I would have actually chopped this when it was half thawed, just a little kind of um, frosty still. It just makes cutting it much easier. But I was doing other things and so now it's the whole way thawed and it just makes it a little bit more uh, challenging to work with. But if you can, if you're thawing frozen meat to use for something and you want it cut up for whatever kind of recipe you're doing, try to cut it when it is still frosty, you know, soft enough to get a knife into it, but definitely not thawed the whole way like this. Doesn't hurt anything either way, it just makes makes the job a little easier. Now the entire house is starting to smell like onions and garlic, which is amazing make room on my cutting board here to do this all. 
And as you can probably see, I've already cut up quite a few mushrooms and a pretty big head of cauliflower. There is no reason you would have to use those two particular veggies, but I think that these all combine to just make a really good flavor that I enjoy quite a bit. And I like soup all the time, but especially on all of the cold winter times of the year, which where I live is most of the year. So I eat a lot of soup. And like I said, my, my base for just about any soup I do starts out exactly the same. I start out with garlic, onions, some kind of um, good saturated fat, and broth. You can buy a broth from a, a grocery store. There's some good bone broths out there for sale. They tend to be expensive. So if you have any interest at all in this, I do strongly encourage people to learn to make their own broth, bone broth. It's super easy. Uh, I'll probably do a video on it at one point, at some point, but right now there's gobs of people out there. If you just Google how to make bone broth, who's got great instructional um, blogs and videos and all that, and it's going to cost you way less than buying a good bone broth. And the reason you want a bone broth is not just the flavor, which is great, but that uh, you get all the nutrients that are in the cartilage and marrow and stuff of a bone that's hard to for humans to eat. Dogs would chew it right up, but our teeth and jaws don't handle that very well. So by leaching it all out into the broth, you're getting a lot of that collagen and things that your skin and bones and hair and all that needs. And it's just also extremely nutritious as well as tastes amazing. And the flavor of a good bone broth is just better than any other kind of commercial broth I've ever used. And if you don't have access to either one, you can at least get the flavor by using a, a powdered bouillon of some kind. You could use beef or chicken or turkey. I would use any one of the three with, with beef or elk. It doesn't matter, but if you can get the real broth, I strongly recommend that. See down in the pot there, My onions and garlic are getting a little bit translucent. You can kind of tell they're getting sauteed when you can start to see through them a little bit. And so I am going to add my meat. That was about two pounds of meat. You could definitely do this recipe with less or with none or with more, whatever, whatever you like. It's part of the fun of cooking that you can just spend anything you want and you can make it the way you prefer and you can try all kinds of different combinations as long as you start out with ingredients that aren't poisonous you're probably going to end up with something pretty good now my onions and garlic are sauteed and not um, so prone to burning I am going to turn the heat up a little bit here so I can kind of start to brown that meat just a bit and I'm going to season it again you probably remember me saying that about a half a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat is usually a pretty good proportion. So I'm going to do a good teaspoon in there. A little extra because I have things other than just meat in there. And that's my Celtic Grey Sea Salt. I'm going to do some basil. If you remember the little trick I've showed before about if you're going to pour herbs straight out of a big container so you don't end up with the whole pint accidentally in your food. I often pour into the lid. That's probably two very generous tablespoons. Put that in there. And then this will be a totally optional ingredient. I just like the little bit of flavor it adds. I put a little bit of Lowry seasoning in here as well. If you weren't going to do that, I would just add a little more salt and it would be perfectly all right. Stir that up in there so those flavors start getting soaked into the meat. This smells awesome, guys. Someday YouTube's going to have to invent a way to record smells. The meat is browning. I'm going to let that get just a little bit more done. And then add broth. 
Obviously, again, you could do a much smaller portion. I tend to feed other people as well. I've got a friend coming over for dinner. And so I'm making enough that I'll have leftovers because I like to heat up some for lunch the next day. Every now and then, I, uh, some kinds of soup freeze better than others, but I will sometimes put a, a single serving worth of soup in the freezer so that I, if I am in a hurry and don't have time to cook one day, I can just pull something out, warm it up quick, and still have good homemade food. Generally, things that have potatoes in don't freeze so well because the potatoes... There'd be nothing wrong with them, but they're really um, watery when you thaw them out. And cauliflower, which is in here, does a little bit the same thing. So this one's not most ideal for freezing because the cauliflower does get kind of a watery texture um, from the way it freezes and thaws. But there wouldn't be anything inedible about it. It doesn't really change the flavor or changes the texture. So I got the meat getting fairly brown. This, like I said, is my bone broth that I have made and froze and thawed out a little bit earlier today. So I'm going to do four cups of broth, and that is pretty strong. I make mine thick, so I'm going to do four cups of water in there as well. And just to be most efficient, I'm going to use the container the broth was in to measure my water. Also ends up rinsing out my container so I get the last little bits of good broth and fat that were in there. There we go. And now I can turn the heat up even a little higher to get this to all warm up because as you can see I've got a little ice chunk there still in the middle. My broth wasn't thawed quite completely out but that's going to melt here in just a minute so that is no problem. So we're going to start that simmering and I'm going to add the mushrooms. I love mushrooms. You could use any kind of mushroom you wanted. I most often use the button ones because those are the easiest variety for me to get year round here. But if I can get other mushroom kinds, I would absolutely use any variety of mushrooms pretty much in here. Or combos of different kinds of mushrooms. A lot of you guys live in different areas and might have access to different things at different times of year, and I recommend all of them. Except for the poisonous ones, of course. And let that simmer. Those mushrooms will start to shrink up quite a bit as they cook. And I could put my cauliflower in here right now. If you wanted to do a different veggie combo, like put carrots or potatoes or something harder and crunchier in there, I would actually put them in pretty soon. But because cauliflower is a really um, tender vegetable, it doesn't take long at all to cook. So it doesn't just cook to a mushy paste. I'm going to wait till everything else is pretty good and simmered. And then I'm going to dump this in just five, six minutes before I want to eat. So that's just going to wait. This is going to simmer for a little bit and I'll come back when I'm ready to dump this in. Okay, so that's all been simmering for 15-20 minutes. It could certainly go longer, but everything is done and I'm hungry. So I'm going to add my cauliflower. Like I said, this only is going to take another 5-6 minutes to cook and then we will be ready to eat. One other ingredient that's also totally optional that you could put in here and I'm not putting in today is, and this goes really well with meat in general or mushrooms or lots of other things, if you happen to have a partial bottle of leftover wine somewhere, I would recommend it. It's a good flavor in here. I don't have one right now, but if I did have some leftover, you know, a leftover bottle, I would dump that in here right now as well. So I'm just going to let that simmer for a tiny bit more till the cauliflower is soft as well, and then eat dinner. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.